Welcome to Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden. I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. Living Mosaic is conceived or understood as an offering to support people in seeing and understanding that there is a solution to the pain, distress, heartbreak, horror, agony that we are experiencing in many facets, many ways on planet Earth at this time. We are conceiving of the solution as being like a living mosaic in which we each have a unique and essential role. At the beginning of this series, we use the term niche. We each have a unique and we each have a unique and essential and evolving niche. Somebody complained about that. So we changed it to we each have our unique and essential place. But recently I've been considering it and thinking role might be better because it's more active. A place sounds like stable. There you are, you're in your place. <clears throat> but this is more like a role in a dance or a role in a play, so, or a role in a chemical reaction. So at the moment, we're using the term role. If you prefer to have us use different language, you're welcome to send it in to our email, livingmosaic2024 at gmail.com. The topic today, general discussion, is messing up. Have you ever done that? Or have you ever recognized it? Last time we talked about shame. And that's one way I know that I've messed up or I feel like I've messed up. We have choices in how we respond when it seems to us that we have messed up or it seems that other people think we've messed up. The Many of us are sort of trained and enculturated to beating ourselves up, saying how terrible we are, we'll never learn, we're bad, we're you know, whatever negative stuff we say about ourselves. What we're coming to see or suspect or discover in the Spark of Humanity work and as it extends into the living mosaic aspect is that when we mess up, if we're aware of it and accept that that's the way it appears to be, that we've messed up, and don't let ourselves go down into the self-castigation rabbit hole, which is bottomless, usually, or it seems that way anyway, when we're sliding on down it, crashing on down it, that say, oh, in some traditions, it said that the world was created out of chaos, that order came out of chaos. So we look at the mess up as a creative opportunity. Within this thing that I feel is a mess up, for which I'm responsible, of course, it's all my fault, um, we look at it and we say, What's the creative potential here? What does this breaking away from usually our expectations, our projections, our ideas about how things are supposed to be, our acceptance of other people's ideas of how things are supposed to be that looks like a mess up because it's not going according to plan, not going according to schedule, not the way we thought it would be. Therefore, if it's not that way, it's messed up. Very bad, 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 bad. If we look at it instead as, oh, it's not going the way we planned. This is not happening, happening as I'd assumed or as I did my best to support it in happening. So, what does this breaking apart of my expectations, 
of my plans, of my ideas for how I was going to spend this time, how I was going to be in this relationship, how I was going to cope with this situation. How does breaking this, having this broken open by the messing up, what does that open up for me? What new avenues, where does that free me up? Where I can respond differently than I should programmed myself to feel I was supposed to respond. And even if we don't, if nothing comes to mind, oh, I can sit on a bench in the sunshine for 20 minutes now, after all. Um, even if nothing that simple and concrete comes to mind, at least our refusing to go down the bad, 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 done that up again, messed up, bad, never going to learn, just to claim the possibility of a creative potential here is huge progress. It's a great help as we are <clears throat> allowing ourselves to be formed and schooled to move into, to grow into our unique and essential role within the living mosaic. So just thinking there's the possibility here. Let me just cut off the critic and be open to the possibility. Where does my body want to go? What does it want to do? Maybe it wants a snack. Maybe it wants a nap. To, it opens up the field when we're allowing ourselves to be open to the possibility that there's some creative potential here in this situation. So, which is a hard habit to get into, but trust me, <clears throat> you can, because I have. <clears throat> so, um, so, you know, welcome to try. The other, another side, another side of this messing up issue is when we think somebody else has messed up. And how do we, how do we deal with that? And with practice, it seems, we can accept that in the same way. Oh, they messed up. Or at least I, I see them as having messed up. My perception is that they messed up. Well, I could go to them and say, see, uh, you messed up here. I want you to acknowledge it. What are you going to do about it? You messed up here. Um, and then, you know, <clears throat> try to deal, try to develop a constructive relationship from that. Or you can say, okay, well, this, this looks like a mess up. And looking honestly and truly, and maybe with the help of honest, tough-minded friends, oh, okay, I really, I didn't have any part of it. <clears throat> it really wasn't my mess up. Um, if there was a mess up, because maybe it's not a mess up. Maybe it's just a creative opportunity. I'm looking there. I'm supposed to be looking up here. I apologize because um, I see this screen here. So looking at, looking at that, how do I respond to someone else's mess up? And that's, that's a question for me at this point. Um, currently, I just say, well, let's toddle on forward in whatever directions we were moving in and, you know, let it, let it sort of be folded into the realm of the past and see how things go. In some cases, I've seen that it seems like if somebody else has messed up and <clears throat> looking at last week's program, they seem to feel ashamed. They're sort of not as friendly as they used to be. They're sort of like... And I think it would probably be kind if I said, do you think you messed up? Or it seems to me that maybe you messed up and I don't care. You know, everything's fine. So, you know, how we respond to somebody else's apparent shame, to somebody else's mess up, mess up, um, I don't know. Something we can think about. We may get to that some other afternoon. 
I think the, the thing that's not helpful is what my oldest sister would have raised me to do, which was to point it out to them. You messed up. Um, because, of course, everybody wants to be just as perfect as I am, right? So I'm doing them a kindness in pointing out where they messed up. But I, I don't think so. I think that, that we have a feeling of when we mess up. It may be to sort of ooze back to the spark practice, where the spark is incorruptible and can't be extinguished, that it becomes, it can be baffled, it can be distorted, it can be defended, usually is. All three for most of us, I think. Mine certainly is. Um, so there's the bafflement of how do I handle this? And, but not necessarily letting that lead me to a distortion, perhaps to getting in touch with my spark of humanity, wherever it may be in this unique information system that, with which I'm identified, this unique system within the ever-evolving, ever all-dimensional dance, <clears throat> connect with their spark of humanity and just rest with that and then let that guide me. So not being defended, I'm not supposed to have the answer. It'd be nice if I did, but there's no cause for me to feel shame because I don't have the answer. What I can do is pick up the tools, <clears throat> excuse me, that are available to me. And one of the tools is that I have a spark of humanity. Um, you know, if you're death on humanity at the moment, you could say you have a <clears throat> a, turn, a tone of true, or a node of light, or but that that place, that non-place, that bit that bit of light, a fire of music within you, which cannot be corrupted and cannot be extinguished, and that place that is uniquely. You, maybe it's not uniquely you, maybe it's the same as everybody else's, but it's uniquely packaged, that's for sure. We're each uniquely packaged with our bafflements and our distortions and our defenses. So that's a place to start when somebody else messes up, when we think somebody else messes up. And it may be a good place to go when we feel we've messed up to find someone else who's been affected by our mess up or our sense of mess up or something to, to claim our spark which cannot be obliterated or extinguished or corrupted. So it's always good to get back to that essential place because then we're not, not operating out of self-centered fear so powerfully. So we get back to that place and that we claim our spark by connecting with and affirming the spark in someone else. So the messing up and the shame, you know, follow upon each other. I know when I'm really in shame, I'm more inclined to mess up because I, because I've lost touch with my spark of humanity. I've lost touch with that place in me that when it is strong, when I'm not girdling it with defenses and bafflements and distortions, that place will guide me to my role in the mosaic. And it's because it's alive and so is the mosaic. They're more alive than anything that's up here, trust me. So the, the shame and the messing up sort of are partners. And how do we, you know, how do we find our way to be free of those 
or to deal with them, to respond to them in a way that leads our sparks uncluttered and the territory around them less polluted so we can be drawn closer to our role in the living mosaic. And how, and it's supporting others too, because remember, the living mosaic, each and every one of us, has a unique and essential role within the living mosaic. So it doesn't work if I think you've messed up. So I don't want to be, I don't want you in my mosaic. I'm going to stonewall you. Um, it doesn't work that way at all. So not that we need to turn ourselves into pretzels. In fact, we'd better not. But the, the claiming the spark is such a benign and easy, I think, or at least simple. It's benign and simple and effective and quiet, unobtrusive. Un it doesn't obtrude on any level that, of conscious awareness of the other par party. It's, in some sense, it's very obtrusive, but people don't generally, I've never met anybody who notices it when I'm, well, when their spark is being affirmed and connected by, with, by somebody else's spark or else they're just feeling better, so they're not trying to block it out. So to realize that every one of us, each one of us, is needed for the solution, for the mosaic, the living mosaic, to, to grow into its potential as the solution for the pain and heartbreak in this world. So we can't exclude, exclude, exclude them connect with them. We're seeing, because our thinking keeps on developing as I sit here and walk here, um, the thing is that the, this Living Mosaic project is sort of the middle of a process we're coming to see, and many others are too, we're using very different language on this one, but the, there is an evolutionary surge afoot in this biosphere on this planet. And it includes everybody and everything. And it's sort of those who tune into this are seeing it generally as the, a movement toward a more a common or consciousness that, that we have with the biosystem, with our fellow creatures in this biosphere, and it just a, just emerging of that consciousness, not, not just the human human, but that too, because <clears throat> that, as we've noticed, needs healing. So that's merging into consciousness, and that can be very scary. People may be trying to resist it because they don't understand it, they're fighting against it, they don't like it. And that awareness, <clears throat> then we want to move to acceptance. This is happening. And that's where the Living Mosaic project comes in, I think. That, that by considering and choosing to take on the perspective that we are unique members of this Living Mosaic, that we have our unique role within it, that that gives us a place of where, where our feet are on the ground, where we know where we belong, where we're not so rattled by the extraneous activities on the planet 
that can be very distressing and heartbreaking. And so that's, that's about the acceptance. And then for the, to adapt to that shift, that, that surge in consciousness and awareness, we have the spark practice. So it's sort of a three-part awareness that there's something going on over which we have no control. And we can choose to join the dance and participate in the dance. And a way we can do that is by conceptualizing it in terms of the living mosaic. And the way we live into it, we adapt to it, is through the spark practice. Or whatever our, you know, I mean, that's one of the ways. Pick your own. But that's what we have to offer, the Spark of Humanity Network. So it's a, it's a living, growing thing. Next week, um, we'll be talking about adaptation. And I've probably given the whole thing away just now. We'll find out. Um, so, the, so the messing up, when we perceive ourselves as messing up, we can open up to the fertile potential, the creative potential. Because really, with this, um, this development, this growth, this greater permeability of consciousness is the way I personally experience it. It's sort of like it's all sort of getting a little wispier. It's things come through that wouldn't have come through if I were more set up in my consciousness. That Where was I going with that sentence? Do you, can you figure it out? I hope so, because I can't. In that process, we, we can choose many avenues to go, and we are just offering the spark of humanity practice. There are many, a gazillion at least, um, ways to have the same impact, we think, I suspect. But, you know, this is the one, this is the one that's been given to me and, and includes other people. And so that's what we're talking about. But we certainly support you in finding your own because what's important to all of us is that we each find our unique role within the mosaic. So whatever, whatever we can do to support you in finding that is, is what we want to be doing. Because it's a, it's a challenging time in this world because there are things we cannot change. And so we can learn to accept them. And then there are things that we can change. So we hope to support you. We welcome you in, in working together to change the things we can change, which is basically us, ourselves. And that's our relationships and how we perceive things and how we respond to things like messings up and all the rest of it. So thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for Orca, for Coleman, Zach, Jin, and Cricket, and everybody else on board here. And thank you for the backup staff of the Spark of Humanity Network of Rose and Danielle and Sam and others. And you can follow us on Facebook. I don't know what that entails, but maybe you do. Um, and feel free to send us your ideas and responses to Living Mosaic 2024 at gmail.com. We're always happy to hear from you and invite others onto our mailing list so you can be notified of when these shows are happening. We're having a little erratic um, series here. We'll be on next week and not the two weeks after that. So, you know, hang on tight, pay attention, look for the creative potential. Enjoy yourself. Thank you for joining us.